Dialysis is the artificial process of getting rid of waste and unwanted water from the blood, a process naturally done by our kidneys. Some people, however, may have failed or damaged kidneys which are unable to carry out its function properly. People with kidney failure experience a buildup of waste in their blood. Without dialysis, the amount of waste products in the blood would increase and eventually reach levels that would cause coma and death. Let us begin by looking at how waste is usually removed from the body. The dominant reactions involved in removing amino acid nitrogen from the body are known as transaminations. This class of reactions funnels nitrogen from all free amino acids into a small number of compounds. Then, either they are oxidatively deaminated, producing ammonia, or the amine groups are converted to urea by the urea cycle. Transaminations involve making an alpha amino group from a donor alpha amino acid to the keto carbon of an acceptor alpha keto acid. These reversible reactions are catalyzed by a group of intracellular enzymes known as amino transferases, which generally employ covalently bound pyridoxal phosphate as a cofactor. Glutamate is a prominent intermediate in nitrogen elimination as well as in anabolic pathways. Glutamate, formed in the course of nitrogen elimination, is either oxidatively deaminated by liver glutamate dehydrogenase forming ammonia or converted to glutamine by glutamine synthase and transported to kidney tubule cells. There, the glutamine is sequentially deamidated by glutaminase and deaminated by kidney glutamate dehydrogenase. The ammonia produced in the latter two reactions is excreted as NH4 plus in the urine, where it helps maintain urine pH in the normal range of pH 4 to pH 8. The extensive production of ammonia by peripheral tissue or hepatic glutamate dehydrogenase is not feasible because of the highly toxic effects of circulating ammonia. When the kidney loses its function and is unable to remove the ammonia and other waste products from the body, renal kidney failure has said to occur. Acute renal failure has three main causes. A sudden serious drop in blood flow to the kidneys, damage from some medicines, poisons, or infections, and a sudden blockage that stops urine from flowing out of the kidneys. There are two kinds of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Methods performed may be different, but the goal of the treatment is the same, that is, to remove waste products. These wastes are composed of mainly of nitrogen in the form of urea, uric acid, and creatine. Hemodialysis is the diffusion across a semi-permeable membrane, which is used to remove the waste from the blood, while simultaneously correcting the levels of electrolytes in the blood. Before hemodialysis can be performed, a surgeon must make a pathway for the blood to be pumped out of the body and then to be returned after it has been cleansed. To do this, the surgeon uses an artery and a vein in the forearm. Arteries bring oxygenated blood to the body from the heart and veins return to the heart. The surgeon connects the radial artery in the forearm to a large vein called a cephalic vein. This connection is called an arteriovenous shunt or catheter. A shunt carries something from one place to another. In this case, it carries blood from an artery to a vein. After, after the shunt is made, the veins in the forearm get big and eventually form muscles in their walls like arteries. They are now strong and can be punctured many times for dialysis. To begin dialysis, the person's shunt is punctured on the arterial side and the venous side with two different needles connected to a set of tubes. The blood is pumped to a dialyzer by a roller pump through lines that can measure flow and pressure. Heparin is added to the blood to prevent clotting. The blood then flows into a special filter that functions like a semi membrane. 
This membrane is surrounded by special fluid dialysate, which is a solution of salt water and glucose and electrolytes. Electrolytes are important in the solution because they are responsible for regulating cell functions. The most important ones are sodium, potassium, chloride, and biocarbonates. In Trinidad and Tobago, there are a number of people who suffer with renal failure and have to resort to hemodialysis. In order to prevent the, the increase of people suffering from the kidney disease, several recommendations have been prescribed by doctors. The following recommendations can be followed. For a healthy lifestyle, persons should limit the animal protein and more vegetable protein since it is less strain on the kidney. Lower the sodium intake through diet, that is, eat less salty foods to maintain blood pressure. Monitor sugar intake to control diabetes if condition is present. Increase fluid uptake, especially water. Fruit juices are acceptable, but limit milk carbonated beverage and alcohol. Exercise regularly and stay or, or become a non-smoker. For people who have just underwent a kidney transplant, the following recommendations can be useful in order to maintain a healthy transplant. Take recommendations prescribed by a doctor strictly and use and visit the doctor often. Stay well hydrated. Limit fat, cholesterol, salt and sugar intake. Exercise regularly and pace your daily activities. Wear sun protection. Avoid people who are ill and get annual flu shots. Most importantly, vigilantly monitor yourself in signs or symptoms of infection or rejection. You know, this kidney problem has been in my family, you know, because my sister had the same thing and, you know, some of my family members died from it as well. Um, I never take any dialysis, you know. I don't get any discomfort when I'm on the machine. But, you know, in taking the dialysis and being on the machine never affect my activities because I'm not young and as active as I used to be. So I normally be, you know, at home, chilling. Um, I never really miss a session because when I miss them, I normally feel sick. And that I just can't remember anything. I don't remember anything that I'll always be doing. So, you know, I think about a kidney transplant, but doctors and all of these people tell me that I can't take it because I'm too old and too weak to withstand the anesthetic. But every day, you know, I continue to fight all the time. But whenever my body is ready to give up, I will just give up. You know, I care as long as nobody is ready, I guess I'll be able to go. How did I know I needed treatment? Well what happened is um for a number of years I suffered from excessive tiredness. Going to the regular GP he said it was um work stress. Um after about that three, four years when he finally run some blood works on me he realized that the complete the kidneys were completely gone and that's when he recommended that I see a nephrologist doctor. Well I started dialysis in January of two thousand and six. I dialyzed for a year and a half twice a week. You tend to have a lot of cramps, uh sometimes you vomit a lot, the nauseous feeling is always there. So yes, dialysis itself is not painful but the the the, the, the um how should I call it? The experience of other things, like you cramping if they're taking out too much water from the body and stuff, that causes a lot of other problems. Yeah, uncomfortable feeling, that is. Um, they say, rarely they estimate a good working kidney, taking good, good care of your transplanted kidney, at least 10 years. However, I know of a person who's actually living 35 years now on a kidney transplant.